Yes, we're off. Right. So, it's uh, Tuesday, 18th of October, still, and this is my second one of the night. And I have a bit of a confession to make, because um, on pretty much every uh, drama I've done so far, I've tried very, very hard to remain as objective as possible. So really kind of disassociate myself from any preconceptions I had previously. If I've had the whiskey before, try and look at it completely with fresh eyes. Try not to look at reviews of other um, of the whiskey if I've not had it. Try not to kind of get some kind of preconception as to what it's like already before I've actually put the thing in my mouth, as it were. Um, to, to try and be as absolutely open as honest as possible with every whiskey that I'm trying for you, for you people, um, to almost as though I'm doing this on your behalf in terms of right looking at this afresh, trying to look at this without any kind of prejudgment because that's always always issue. And I've had some nice surprises, famous grouse bells to be perfectly honest, um, where I had preconceptions and you know what actually they're not as bad as I thought. It was it was the snobbish snobbishness. That, um, that was kind of clouding my judgment of it. However, with this particular whiskey, it has been quite hard for me not to already have some kind of impression as to what it's like, simply because when people have found out that I have this on the list, the people that have tried this have gone, oh my God, what have you got that on the list for? Or, man, I can't wait till you try it because you've not had it yet, you're gonna bloody hate it even to the point where when I was doing my research for this, it was very, very hard for me to find out any information without bypassing words along the lines of, this is absolutely dreadful, what the hell is this whiskey all about? So, I'm going to try and remain open-minded, and I'm hoping that it's not gonna be anywhere near as bad as what a lot of people seem to be saying it is. So, Fujikai. This sample here, which was very, very kindly sent to me by the wonderful Barry Bradford, who runs the Whiskey Files. And um, again, congratulations to Barry on um, a second child on the way. You uh, you lucky man, you. Two is fantastic. Three, I wouldn't even go there with a barge pal. Um, so thanks for this. Um, from what I've been hearing from other people, it almost I can almost imagine you were laughing as you were bottling this and sticking the label on, sniggering to yourself, going, hee hee hee, let's give Ben some of this. But I appreciate it, thank you very much. Um, so the bottle itself looks like this. And if you wanted to buy a bottle of it, you'd be looking at um, 50 pounds Master and Mortar selling it for. And it's from it's actually from a winery um, called Mondus Shuzu. Shuzo. Monda Shuzo, um, who are based in um, uh, the sort of northern base of Mount Fuji, which is here, which is, goes partly towards the name. Um, Fuji is in the uh, Yamanashi prefecture, or, you know, the prefectures are kind of Japanese equivalents of, say, counties in England or states in America. Um, but one, one of the former names, I think before it became Yamanashi, um, was uh, Kaino Kuni or Kai, as it was known. So Fuji Kai is actually um, Fuji, where they are, Kai, the prefecture that they were in. There you go, there's the name of that. Um, so Mon uh, Mondu Shuzo um, are a winery, have been going since 1952, um, but relatively recently got into distilling. And Japanese whiskey isn't a particularly big industry. There's not that many distilleries. And you've got Suntory and Nikka are your two behemoths. They're the two that pretty much dominate the, the, the whiskey industry out of, um, out of Japan. But there is a, a, a section of, of whiskey makers that are known as um, G whiskey. Um, and this is essentially craft whiskey, so that you can get G beer as well. So J I dash whiskey or beer, and this, this is the, the terminology for um, craft whiskey or, or kind of like micro whiskey. And and this is really what Fujikai is from Mondashuzo. Is a um, even though they're a massive winery in quite a big, I think it's the biggest wine making region in Japan. In terms of whiskey, this is micro distilling. This is limited edition bottles. Um, kind of small scale, slightly experimental, or just kind of like, well, we're going to try and do it and see what happens. So, um, at the moment, this is distributed exclusively via um, uh, Le Whisky du Monde, which is a French company, and they distribute this throughout Europe. Um, 
and <coughs> it's a limited run of 8,088 bottles. Um, in terms of um, sort of the uh, production techniques, anything like that, not really a lot. It is single malt, so it's malted barley, and it's matured in ex-burn casks. That's really about it. But for whatever reason, it seems to be that the flavour profile of this, and I haven't come across anybody or read anybody that's had a single good word to say about this. So I am kind of going into this with a bit of trepidation, but I really, really want to give it a chance because I kind of feel a bit sorry for it. The bottle, by the way, it's only 50 ml bottles. Um, so I believe, I did read somewhere, whether this is true or not, because I didn't know this, but I understand, according to this, if this is true, that you won't be able to get this in America because apparently you can't sell 50, um, 50 CL bottles in America. Did I say 50 mil? It's 50 CL bottle. But apparently you can't sell 50 CL bottles in America. It's got to be um, 70 CL, 75 or litres and upwards. Um, so, yeah, I didn't know that. Um, so it's entirely possible that you won't be able to find Fujikai in America at all, which, again, from what I gather, is probably a good thing for you. So. Not a bad colour actually, quite a nice like proper amber colour, whether they've added colour or not I've no idea, but it's um, it's a very healthy amber, very much kind of like, you know, stick a mosquito in it and you can make Jurassic Park out of it, that kind of colour. So, <laughs> oh, whoa, right, okay now I can understand why a lot of people have gone, what the hell is this? However, this, it is, oh yeah, bloody hell fire. This reminds me actually quite a bit of, oh crap, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get my phone out and double check it because I cannot remember which one it was. It was, it was the, it wasn't the Belgian, it wasn't the Diedenacker, Threeland. It reminds me of Threeland. So if you've not seen it yet, go back and it's, I'm, I'll bring it up. I'll, I'll find out the, the number of it because it's well worth going back to see that because that was really, really distinctive. Um, it was it was a German, was it, it wasn't single malt, it was rye. And it was really, really intense, but it was kind of like pure grass and hay and, um, like bison grass vodka reminds me of as well. If anybody's had bison grass vodka, there's a really distinctive nose to it where it's not quite bitter, but it's very, very sharp. And it reminds me of that. And this this is not too dissimilar to the Threeland. And again, the Threeland was one where a lot of people were like, this is, this is awful stuff. But it's so distinctive and unusual that it was actually kind of you know what this is interesting I kind of like it because it's so unusual I'm not sure I'd want to drink a bottle of it but it's certainly very very distinctive so three land was number 49 in the challenge if you go back to um, number 49 three land three land eight year old I think it was um, and it's got elements of that having said that the three land was more more intensity and more grass and hay and very much purity grass and hay. This has a really musty, off, sickly sweetness to it as well. And there's kind of, there's acetone, so there's nail polish remover. There's wet dog, and I bloody know what wet dog smells like. Because he sat there, it's not raining now, but he sat down there and Jesus, he stinks at times. And it's, what's that nose? It's like, um, tell you what it reminds me of, it's rubbery, but it's not tyres. It's like um, plimsolls, school plimsolls. You know the ones that have got those like rubber soles? And you sort of take a sniff of that, so it's kind of a rubber, but it's not its not a really strong rubber tyre. And hay. And I, it's bizarre. It is absolutely weird. 
the Threeland, I could get round it. The Threeland, I could kind of go, this is weird, but actually I appreciate what it's trying to do and what it does, it does well, although it's not gonna, it's not gonna appeal to everybody. This is just, this has gone too far. That rubberiness is really off-putting. It, it's slightly sickly as well. If, if you took that sickly, rubbery sweetness away, it would, wouldn't actually be that bad. It's, it's clean and it's fresh. And okay, it's nail polish remover and hey, but you know, if you just stripped away this, this really sickly, kind of melty, rubber, sicky, off-putting, what the hell is going on? If you took that away, there'd be enough to at least go with. I hope to Christ it doesn't taste like it smells. Right, let's do this. Okay, fortunately it's not. It's 43% as well, which I don't think I mentioned. Now, it starts off quite sharp and it really does prickle all around your mouth, even on my lips. And there is acetone in there. There's not the sickly rubberiness, fortunately, because that would have been a bit kind of whoop. Um, there is acetone there, but it's much more subdued. Eventually, right at the end, this malty character comes through that's quite, quite sweet, quite rich, not a bad mouthfeel, but it really feels like you've got to plow through some really unbalanced sharpness to get to it. Unfortunately, on that mouthful, I took a breath in through my nose as I took it into my mouth, and I got a waft of that sickliness, that rubber sole, plimp soles. Basically, a kid's been sick on the assembly room floor. The caretaker stroke janitor has thrown sawdust down on it like they normally do. Another kid has got their PE kit on, and they're wearing their black sole plimp soles so that you don't dirty the floor hasn't realized the pile of sawdust is there, stepped in it, run off, not realized, gone outside for a bit of a play, still around the trainers, come back in, and then you've taken a whiff of it. It's not good. It's not, it's not nice. It's not nice at all. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? Yeah, this smells horrible. It's weird. But it's not even weird in a good way. It's not in a weird kind of like, it's weird, but actually, you know, I'll give it some credit. This is weird and no credit at all because I, I don't even know how they've managed to get those flavors. What the hell have they done? It's like they've added something to it. I don't know how you can possibly distill a spirit and mature it in casks without adding something to it or have casks that have got fricking mold around the inside to get that sort of nose. It's a bit bitter, but it's not too bad. Oh, now it's got really woody, really woody. Chewing on the end of a pencil woody. There is some underlying multi character to it though. That's the annoying thing, is right at the base of all this weird shit that's going on on top of it is, is quite a smooth, eminently drinkable whiskey. It's just surrounded by weird stuff going on, crazy stuff that has no right to be in that glass. The palette, fortunately, doesn't have any of the mental characters that the nose does, but it doesn't have anything of benefit apart from right at the end, right underneath everything, a okay malt whiskey. But even then, you feel like you've got to fight through some sharpness and some, some casks to get to that whiskey character. I can absolutely understand why 
pretty much everybody that I've met that's had this. In fact, it's not even pretty much everyone. Everybody that I've met that's had this have gone, mate, it's awful. And I don't want to say it's awful because I'm trying to find a redeeming character to it. It has got character. I'll grant you that. It has got bags of character. It has, you know, it's an absolute, it's a total talking point whiskey. You could put this on on a whiskey tasting and people would be talking about it for days. For the wrong reasons, in the whiskey's case, but people would be talking about it. It's certainly a memorable whiskey. And that is a good thing, the fact that it's not forgotten. It's, rem it's memorable for unfortunate reasons, but at least it's memorable. And there is something there, right at the bottom, there's a little spark of hope, where it's like, there's a little bit where it's, do you know what? There's a nice little bit of whiskey in there, but unfortunately, you have to do an Andy Dufresne in the Shawshank Redemption and crawl through a mile of shit, or was it four miles of shit? Four football fields of shit in a pipe to get to the other side, to get to that one bit where you can actually get some half decent whiskey. But the stuff beforehand, that is weird. Beyond compare. I congratulate you, Fujikai because you have made a very, very memorable whiskey. Fujikai, Monde Shuzu have made a very memorable whiskey, which I think, honestly, I think people should try and try it. I wouldn't pay 50 quid for it, um, for a 50 ml bottle, but I would, 50 ml, that's 50 ml bottle. I would be tempted to definitely chip in with some friends. I think if there's a if there's a bunch of you, if you've got some friends that live near you, and there's ten of you, and go, do you know what? We'll stick a fiver in each, and we'll get a bottle of it, and we'll have it one night. We'll do a little whiskey tasting, and we'll have that. I don't know whether you'd have it at the start or the end, though. There's a question because there's mm, you'd be alright having it to start with or towards the, the start, you know, second or third in, because there's not, it's more on the nose than on the palate, and there's not really enough, the, the finish is gone by now, I can't really taste anything now, and the, the, it's not gonna kind of overpower anything else that you're having afterwards. So if you did like a Japanese whiskey taste, or even if you just did, you know what, we're gonna get some really unusual whiskeys, and we're gonna try them and see what they're like, that would be a laugh, that's worth getting the bottle for. I think it'd be a riot. It would be so funny drinking that with friends with whiskey enthusiasts and whiskey lovers and getting around a table and having some fun with your friends and trying that and trying to come up with different ways of describing because there is a lot of different elements in this. Nine out of 10 of them are bloody horrible, but trying to pick out all these individual things and trying to go, what the hell does that taste like? It tastes like sweaty underpants, all of that sort of thing. That would be the fun of it. And that's probably not what Mondashuzu have intended. But if that's what the end result is, fair play to them. But I'm pretty certain that's not what they wanted. Very, very interesting. Barry, thank you very much for that. It was certainly an education and an experience. I am hoping that my next few Japanese whiskies that I'll be having will be slightly more mainstream, shall we say. Right, I shall see you at the next one. Cheers.